Thank you, Ron, reminding us of our Savior's love for us. If you're turning your Bibles to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 7, we're looking at Stephen's sermon. He brings out the life of Joseph for 13 years in just, just a few verses. But yet, as we have seen from the life of Joseph, that life is sometimes the pit, as we often say. I love the story of Joseph because we see that he doesn't come, could we say, from a normal family, so to speak. It's very dysfunctional. There's jealousies. There's uh, mistreatment. If anybody had any reason to turn out bad, it was Joseph. And as I deal with people through these many years of ministry, I use Joseph as an illustration to say, you can overcome your family. God can help you overcome hardships. You can overcome your background. You may not be gifted or talented. It may have been mistreated. And oftentimes in our society, we blame others for our messed up lives. When we decide like Joseph, you know what? I'm going to live for God regardless. In Joseph's life for many years, uh, beginning with this story of the pit, uh, went everywhere but down. I mean, it went down instead of up. Listen to Stephen as he describes the life of Joseph in verse 9 of chapter 7. And the patriarchs moved with envy and sold Joseph into Egypt. But I love this wonderful phrase, but God was with him and delivered him out of all of his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He made him governor over Egypt and all of his house. We've already seen that life sometimes seems unfair. In two main areas, life sometimes seems unfair. First of all, with people. Why does God allow people to mistreat us, to do us wrong? And again, as we see in this story, that Joseph was doing nothing but right. At 17 years of age in our story in Genesis 37, we see that Joseph is given the responsibility to be in charge of his older brothers. And of course, uh, that didn't go very good, but uh, God was at work in this particular story. And of course, now he tells them his dreams. His dreams are from God of what God is going to do in his life and really in the nation uh, that will rise up in the coming days. And God tells him some wonderful things that he's going to do and how he's going to protect and be with him. But that didn't go over too well with his brothers either. And of course, you know the story as he goes to bring his brother's word uh, from his f father. And uh, his brothers as often begin to make fun of him. The hatred, the jealousy, the envy that's there. Here comes this dreamer. And again, the Bible tells us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And that's why that Jesus encourages us to guard, to keep our hearts. Uh, because uh, Jeremiah tells us, the heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Uh, who can know it? And as we feed the uh, jealousies and envies and discontent that arises in our hearts. It feeds that and that is exactly what happened to Joseph's brothers as they fed that to evil in their hearts toward their brother. And then in this sad story, you remember, as they see him coming, uh, they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. And they said, Come now, let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. 
is you would think that surely uh, these are not his brothers. Surely these are not his relatives. But it goes to show you how low you can stoop when you allow sin to dominate your thoughts and your life and you feed that envy and jealousy and hatred uh, toward others. And that's exactly what happened uh, with Joseph. But again, God was at work. As you remember in the story, again, they threw him in the pit and then they plot uh, his demise. It's interesting about uh, life sometimes does seem um, that people are allowed to mistreat us. I'll never forget a story a dear lady t told me in our church and uh, she had gone to the different doctors trying to uh, treat her. She was a diabetic and uh, we had gone camping with this family on a number of occasions and uh, this is a sweet godly family. He was a deacon and, and they were just faithful. And uh, as she had complications, she was going to this doctor and he was treating her for different things and trying to get it better. And it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And finally, uh, she was encouraged to get a second opinion. She went to another doctor. Um, and as she went to, to a doctor that we had gone to and had helped us, uh, this doctor said, I don't know who you've been seeing, but whatever was being done was making your problem worse. And sure enough, she had to have her leg amputated uh, because of the mistreatment that she had received. God, why do you allow such things? It might be a doctor, it might be a family member, it might be uh, an employee, a friend, a loved one, that, that these things happen and come into our lives. We, we don't understand them. Whether it be Corey Dean Boone or whether it be Fanny Crosby, as we told you last week, that uh, how that she was mistreated by uh, this, uh, the family called a quack that looked after her and made her condition worse. But uh, we see that problems come into our lives through people that uh, are allowed to mistreat us. And then uh, we see that life doesn't seem fair when problems come into our lives and difficulties happen. Uh, we just don't understand. Again, in this story, as we see... What took place with Joseph uh, that uh, they said, Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Now things are going from bad to worse. He's sold by the Ishmaelites uh, into slavery. And uh, now as they uh, take him off uh, in chains, maybe his brothers, the Bible doesn't give us the details. Maybe they said, bye-bye, dreamer. Bye-bye, dreamer. No more dreams. And maybe they're laughing and making fun of him as he goes up over the hill in the desert there. Uh, how sad the problems that seem like have gone from bad to worse. You know, it seemed like, as we said, with Asap, as he cried out, uh, why does it seem like the wicked and the unsaved, is, it seemed like that their life goes okay. And here we are living for God. Here Joseph was trying to do right and, and please his father and please the Lord. And God was giving him dreams and visions of, of the future and what God would do. And things just got worse. Sometimes life seems unfair, but sometimes life seems unjust. Again, as we see in this story, uh, it's getting bad. What happened to those dreams? Uh, it seemed like they're put on hold and things are, are, are getting bad. Isn't that the way it is sometimes with God? And He tells Abra, Abram that He's going to do something special. He's going to give him a seed. He's going to give him a son. And what happens? 25 years go by. He's not getting any younger. He's getting older. Not only he, but his wife as well. Again, I think about the story with Gideon. You remember that God told him He would uh, deliver His people uh, from uh, bondage from the uh, uh, enemy but uh, he dwindles his army down from 32,000 uh, just to 300 so again life uh, seems unjust it, it doesn't seem right that God would allow these things so I was reading the story of uh, Fanny Crosby as we shared with you last week 
about how she was taken to the doctor and uh, he made things worse. They saved up for four or five years trying to uh, go to this other doctor and that didn't work out as he was uh, revealed to her that things were bad. But again, she was born in March of that year. Uh, it was about eight months later, the story goes, that her father... Uh, John Crosby was uh, just an old farmer working, trying to tend to his family. He went out in the fields with it pouring down rain and difficulties and got in this storm and he got sick and the sick uh, grew worse and he died. So not only now does Mercy um, have a blind child, but now she's a widow at 21 years of age. So again, life just doesn't seem fair. It seems unjust. What is God doing? But isn't it a blessing to know that uh, no matter whether it's in Genesis or whether it's in Revelation, the Bible tells us that uh, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. I love the story of Joseph because I can see from a teenager all through his life the hand of God. And as I look back over my life, you know what stands out is the little things. The see that God is in control. It's the little things. It's easy for us to see the big things, but it's often to see that God is still in control of my life. And look at the little things and how it's the little things that life pivots. History is changed by the little decisions that happens. But listen to this story and, and see the little things that are happening in Joseph's life that tells us that there is a God in control. You remember the story about Reuben? Now who is Reuben, you remember? Reuben is the oldest. So listen to what happens. As uh, they said, here comes this dreamer, and they plot to kill him. And they said, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Now this is all the brothers. But listen to verse 21. And Reuben heard it. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. So the plot to kill Joseph turns on the dime of the oldest brother. The oldest brother realizes that this is not right. Let's don't kill him. So things begin to change. And what do they do? They throw him into a pit. And now they're plotting and planning uh, to do some terrible thing with him. But the story doesn't stop there. Listen to what Reuben's plan was in verse 21. It says, And Reuben heard it. He delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him. And here's what he said, That he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. So here's Reuben's plan. We'll throw him in this pit. And all along, Reuben had planned to go to this pit, deliver his younger brother, and take him back to his father. Let me, let me ask you, what if Reuben's plan would have worked out? As good as it was, as good as he intended, he went along with the brothers for the evil and throwing him in the pit. And then, of course, uh, we don't know what happened, whether he was out of the scene when they sold him in the slavery. The Bible doesn't give us the details. But again, it was the little things. So Reuben's plan didn't follow. It didn't work out. He sold in the slavery. And sure enough, in the pit, these Ishmaelites, of all the places they could be, they just happened to be passing by. And they sell him to the Ishmaelites. And guess where they just happened to be going? 
down into Egypt. And guess who they happened to sell him to? You know what? As the Bible says, as they went down in verse 36, And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. Isn't that wonderful to know that all of these little things that were happening in Joseph's life, it shows you young people, when you live for God, whether you're 17 or whether you're 77, God is at work in your life and God will take care of you. And it's often the little things that you see the hand of God. The Bible says in Psalms 37 and verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. God will take care of us. And that's such a blessing. I was going through some of my old pictures uh, recently and I found a picture of <clears throat> a dear man in our church, Brother M.K. Morgan. And uh, there was a plaque that we had put uh, in our church and I took a picture of that plaque before I left. It was his picture. And it gave testimony of a man who lived for the Lord for s over 75 years that he was a Christian. And that how that God has been faithful to him all of these years. And when I saw that picture of that plaque, it just thrilled my heart to say, you know what? God has promised uh, to be with me and he's in control of my life all the way through. It's the little things. You remember in the book of Ruth, chapter 2 and verse 3, that when Naomi comes back uh, to Bethlehem and she's bringing Ruth with her, of all the fields that she could step her foot into, <clears throat> It says her hap was to be just in the right field of Boaz. You remember in the book of Nehemiah that it was Nehemiah that just happened to uh, uh, overhear a conversation with Hanani in Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 2. You remember the story in the book of Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. It said, That night could not the king sleep. Well, who cares whether the king had a sleepless night? Who cares whether uh, Biden has a sleepless night? I mean, that wouldn't make the headlines of the news but you know what that night the king couldn't sleep and he needed something to read and guess what they brought him the story of Mordecai and he read it to him uh, I mean uh, uh, how God works in the details of our lives isn't that wonderful the story said in 1832 the French engineer Ferdinand Marie Lesseps was traveling the Mediterranean when one of his passengers became sick and the ship was quarantined. Now, it wasn't with COVID. The quarantine led his to reading the book by Charles Pierre, a man who studied the building of a canal through the Red Sea to the Mediterranean. Thirty years later, Lesseps built that canal and that quarantine proved to be immensely profitable in his life. The little things that God is working in the life of Joseph. But notice as we see the hand of God at work, I've often seen that when God is working in my life, He's working in other people's lives along the way. That when God is doing one thing, He's often doing multiple things in the lives of people. So again, as we see Joseph now is taken off to Egypt and there he is sold into slavery. God is teaching Joseph some lessons. Lessons in his life. Learning to trust God in the pit. Learning to trust God in Potiphar's house. Learning to trust God in the prison. Learning to trust God in the palace. How to deal with mistreatment and unkindness. 
how to deal with temptation. God is teaching Joseph some wonderful, valuable lessons in his walk with God as a teenager. But God is also teaching some lessons to Jacob, his father. This was a very difficult situation in Jacob's life. You remember, he's been a trickster and a deceiver most of his life. Thank God that he, he wrestled with the Lord and got victory. But again, as God is te teaching Jacob once again, sadly to say, his own sons are deceiving him. His own sons have broken his heart. His own sons that he will find out later had deceived him and find out that Joseph is alive and he too would come back to Egypt. God is also teaching his brothers a lesson. The Bible says, Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. And Joseph's brothers were learning a lesson of the chastening hand of the Lord and understanding not only the forgiveness of their brother, but the forgiveness of God. How that you remember in this story that uh, Joseph would eventually stand before his brothers and he would see a change that had come over them through the testings and trials that uh, he would test them uh, in that wonderful story. You remember uh, when he put the uh, cup in, um, you remember Benjamin's uh, sack? You remember when Judah came back? Oh, before, you remember, uh, they had sold their brother into slavery, but now Judah is standing up and he says, let me be a surety for my brother. And what a wonderful lesson. But again, what do we learn? That God promises to be with us. He promises to give His presence. Again, as we go back, uh, Stephen, in his sermon, he's given us some powerful truths when he says, God was with him. God was with him and delivered him out of all of his afflictions. Isn't it a blessing to know that uh, God was with him? I love that song that we sing if Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. Tis heaven to me wherever I be, if he is there. I count it a privilege here, his cross to bear. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. Oh, again, God was teaching Joseph that his presence was with him. You remember those dreams that Joseph had? Again, those were from God. And you and I can rest assured in Acts or in Hebrews 13, 5, that God said, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And isn't it a blessing to know that wherever God sends us on the mission that he has given us, the things may befall us and things may seem unjust and unfair and life may not turn out as we plan, but to know that God is with us wherever we go. Again, as I shared with you this morning and tonight about this young man um, that was with us, Jeremiah Markle, and uh, as we got word about his dad being uh, there in uh, Puerto Rico, um, and got put in the hospital and he was greatly concerned and then other things began to happen and he have, was having seizures and difficulties and then there was a tropical storm that was coming through uh, Puerto Rico and they were telling us about the hurricane uh, how they survived that and it just seemed like there was one problem and difficulty after another but isn't it a blessing to know that wherever our missionaries go wherever that God sends them, that God's presence will go with them. But it's a blessing to know that God's presence will go with us. And God's peace is with us as well. Again, as we see the story of Joseph, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 19 that Joseph told his brothers later, he said, I am in the place of God. 
I am in the place of God. And that's what's so wonderful about Joseph, no matter where you saw him, whether it was the pit or the, or the uh, Potiphar's house or the prison, that there Joseph kept his faith in the Lord and the peace of God just wouldn't rattle him whatsoever. I think about the story of Peter in Acts chapter 12. You remember it says that they had uh, killed James and Peter, there he was asleep in prison. Asleep in prison. Here James has just been killed and Peter, the, the angel, in fact, you remember, had to wake him up. And what a blessing to know that God can give you and I peace in the midst of COVID, in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of hard times. God can give us His peace. And then what's so wonderful about this story is to see the power of God woven throughout the story. Again, the verse I quoted earlier, whether it be the good and the bad and the ugly, the unjust and the unfair things that happen in our lives, that uh, God's power, that Jesus said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Paul said we're more than conquerors through him that uh, loved us. And John calls us overcomers. Overcomers in this life. If anybody had a reason to turn out bad, to give up, to get bitter, to be a nothing, it was Joseph. He came from a dysfunctional family. His mother died during the birth of his brother. His father showed favoritism. His brothers hated him. He was sold into slavery, mistreated, abused, lied and deceived 13 years from 17 to 30. And life sometimes is the pits. But I'm thankful it gives us encouragement to know that we can still have faith in God. As I was reading the story about Fanny Crosby and her mother Mercy, <clears throat> as they returned home to Grandma Crosby, she was there waiting on them when they returned. Four or five years they had saved up to go to this doctor. Four or five years they scraped and did everything that they could, but they received nothing but disappointment. Here's what Fanny Crosby said about the ride home. I sat there on the deck of the ship amid the glories of the departing day. The low murmur of the waves soothed my soul into a delightful peace. Their music was translated into tones that were like a human voice. And for many years their melody suggested to my imagination the call of genius as she was struggling to be heard from her prison home in some tiny shell lying percent at the bottom of the river. Back home, Grandma Crosby was there to comfort them and tell Mercy, as she was wont to do, something to the effect that if God does not want you to have what you have prayed for, then it is best for you not to have it. What faith! She assured her distraught daughter that God would provide for this little Fanny Jane and that she had a useful future in store for her, even if she was always to be without sight. You see, life comes our way and it seems so unfair and unjust. But again, like Joseph, if we can just keep our faith in God and look to Him. Would you bow with me in prayer? Stephen was saying, but God was with him. His brothers sold him into slavery. He was mistreated and abused for 13 years. And God delivered him out of all of his afflictions. Isn't that wonderful to know? I don't know what unjust thing that has come into your life. 
the death of a loved one, the sickness, tragedy, heartache, disappointment. It can make you bitter or it can make you better. But Fanny Crosby's mother and her grandmother said, you know what? If God doesn't want our, da our daughter and our granddaughter to see, then it must be good for us. The Bible says, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk uprightly. And it takes great faith to believe that when God withholds something from you, that it must not be good for you. Would you trust Him tonight? Father, thank You. Thank You sometimes for the things we don't understand. Thank You sometimes for the things we pray and save and beg God for and He doesn't give. Help us, dear Father, to be like this young teenage boy at 17 years of age. What a, what a boy of faith he was. We can be that. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn to 470, if you would. Living for Jesus, a life that is...